How do you actually have an honest conversation with a police officer on being scared and still being able to do their job with competency? Well, I think that if you don't have a certain element of fear, um, there may be something else wrong with you. Uh, situations are, are quickly, they evolve quickly. They're often um, uh, quite dangerous. They involve alcohol and mental health issues. So if you don't have a healthy dosage of fear, uh, I worry that maybe this is just the wrong profession uh, generally for you. Uh, but we have to provide a, um, a, a certain level of officer wellness programs to make sure that our officers from call to call to call are in the right frame of mind to transition from maybe a, uh, a, a high impact um, call and then their next one may or a highly charged call and then their next one may be you know a traffic crash but they don't immediately just turn that off there's a process where the adrenaline sort of dwindles down in the body and we don't recognize that and we often are just more worried about time and send officers to calls and perhaps that's where you see some of these outbursts it may not be the situation they're facing right then but it could be what they saw about an hour before so I just want to close out with, uh, we have a roadmap for, the, for reform and President Obama uh, in January of 2015 uh, initiated the President's Task Force on 21st Century Policing. It has six pillars and they're very well defined. The first one is building trust and legitimacy in our communities. The second one focuses on policy and oversight, including civilian oversight of police. Third one is technology and social media. How do we use that to better improve communications and engagement with our communities um, and appropriate technology. Uh, the the uh, fourth one is community policing and crime reduction. Fifth one is training and education of police. And the sixth one is what I just talked about, uh, but in much more detail, uh, officer wellness. I urge everyone to read it. I provided Ashley with a link um, and we can certainly put it out to, to um, um, people that are watching right now. But we have roadmaps in place. It's just a matter of implementation. It's a matter of uh, making sure that uh, the, of the 18,000 plus police departments, which sort of explains the problem, uh, that you know we start to sort of get some consensus on where we need to go. And they're all differently. They're all different. They're, they're managed by different policies and they're fiercely locally resourced and uh, people hang tight to their police departments. I think that, uh, you, you know, we were at a disadvantage, you know, in, in the UK, uh, the home office rules uh, pretty much every police department in the country in, in the UK police service and policies just go all the way through from one place, central place down. We don't have that in the United States. And I think it's hard for people to understand why two police departments could be so different and feel so different. One could be completely legitimate right next to one where, you know, you're afraid to get pulled over. So um, I think this conversation is a good sort of scratch of the surface, but we've got a long way to go. Again, I remain optimistic and hopeful, uh, but we have a lot of work to do to get to where the United States should be in 2016 and beyond.